Yes, it is Blue Lagoon. The game is Brick Shields in it, is she F. This is called Deep Stranded or Stranded Deep, and it's recently been put on Game Pass. I just Googled the in initial release date and it said 2015. So apologies, everyone, because this is damn good. Only six gigabyte. Hop on and download it. By the time I finish blabbering, it's going to be ready. <laughs> It's not as deep as either of these two games I'm going to mention, but get ready for this one. This is a mixture of a bit of Ark, a bit of Subnautica, maybe a little bit of Sea of Thieves. It's a hell of a blend, and it works and plays very well. This is on my PC. We've got 90 frames per second. I don't believe a word of that. By the way, I am Couch Coop, and welcome to my split-screen review of Deep Stranded. I really like survival games, especially survival horror games. Stuff like The Forest and Subnautica are always craved to have split screen on them and I think kind of getting that itch scratched a little bit with this. This is how the game looks without split screen. It isn't a huge jump from the graphics we're seeing on that dual player so I'm well impressed with it. For its size, it's pretty incredible. It has a full day and night system, weather system, and there's a lot in that water. It's very detailed on the wildlife and what's on your little patch of island. One thing to watch out for on the PC version is that it defaults to the mouse and keyboard. This is me wrestling with said controls, trying to just pick up the damn paddle. It is okay, you kind of get used to it. It's just a bit strange. Could just be me being a complete numpty. Back to the split screen. Top tip, your little lifeboat has a bag at the back of it, which not only acts as storage, but it's got a compass in and some rations. You totes need that because this game is about gathering bloody rocks and sticks at the beginning just to get a damn ax together. Everyone knows the deal. If you've played up, you can do this with your eyes shut, but it's still enjoyable because the island's so tiny and you're always looking at these other ones on the horizon and just thinking, I need to get my shit together and get over to those to see what's going down. It is very tempting to explore that water early doors and one of the incentives to not fall out of that raft at that beginning bit is because there's a damn great hammerhead that will hurt you. Now the health, as you may have noticed, is not anywhere on the HUD other than sort of stamina depletion and leveling. I love the flush HUD, that's really cool, but the game does have all of the same mechanics as any other survival with your watch acting as the actual stats, numbers, all the important information. Back to how tempting it is to go out to sea, I was so impressed with the detail and what they've put in. There's a little turtle out there in the distance, there's more than one species and type of shark, and one of the big pulls of this game is there's a massive tentacle, octopus tentacle on the cover. I cannot wait to get to that kraken. It does have the function to adjust some of the rules when you're opening a map before you start playing it. And the game doesn't allow the second player to drop in on the single player game. You have to make that decision at the start. <laughs> One of the other things is you cannot save until you've made the shelter. To make the shelter, you need to get the hammer done. And of course, there is, I would say, about 45 minutes of running around and getting wooden sticks before you can initiate your first save. I like that. And I like the tree climbing mechanic. Let's have a look at day and night cycles, some of the weather, how the sun sets, what it looks like at night time, how important is illumination. All of the aforementioned is in the right place. I've been playing survival games for a good decade. Some of my favorites include Don't Starve and of course Art. The Forest is an awesome game and even stuff like No Man's Sky, which has blatantly become a massive Galaxian survival game. Let's talk about that exposure element, the day and night system, temperatures. Does anything affect you if you're in the sun too long? Do you need to drink a lot? There is some of that and you cannot be running around out in the exposed sunlight. You will get a warning that you've got a little bit hot, you get out of breath, but there's no light you're freezing. When the sun goes down, you have to get near the fire and there aren't any like zombie skeleton ridden creatures coming out of the bushes as soon as it gets dark. So you can chill and really get your head around everything on that starter island. When talking about having things in the 
workplaces, I am referencing the control scheme, the crafting system, and how easy it is to short key things and make stuff on the fly and just have a wheel ready, switch out stuff when you need it quickly. It's all there to be used and it's very intuitive. You kind of don't need a tutorial if you're into the survival genre. The Dead of Night is actually really cool. There was a raft-based survival game that was out a couple of years ago that was online multiplayer that I remember, but I don't think you actually got to any islands. And one of the major directions for this game is to get a raft and get over to other bigger islands, which I've attempted in the single player. Bigger foes and creatures around, stuff like snakes and boars, so you need to make sure you've got your armory ready prior to setting sail. Let's talk about fire and the fire system, illumination. It is all standard stuff, getting wildlife, whacking it on, cooking, getting your torches, it helping you see everything at night and just basically being an essential stage to ranking up through the building sections. With this game being quite modern and on PC, you can go to town with some of the effects and I'm only running this on high with the split screen because I want a smooth frame rate, but you can go crazy to ultra. I'm still impressed with a lot of the ambient mechanics very cool stuff to see on a split screen survival game these nice modern techniques and one thing is to remember there's no map there's no mini map you can't even see each other's names when you look around and it was surprising how often we couldn't find each other on an island that is the size of a postage stamp so having the torches going at night and having little areas around so you can see what you're doing and where you're going is definitely a plus point there's also some bats around that scare the crap out of you I suppose there is a little bit of seven days to die with it, making each 24 hours an accomplishment and basically expanding and getting to better areas and having better stuff to craft and have access to. There is some very advanced weaponry, there's a vehicle tree, there's all manner of stuff to fight, the giant creatures and sharks that you're going to encounter when you start island hopping. <laughs> It is also looking really good and one of the more chill survival games out there. I would so recommend this to who want a sort of soft landing with survival games and have that steady gradient of difficulty and really the time and no pressure to just muck around and get your head around how everything works because a lot of survival games are very pushy, you've got to get everything done and they're also very difficult with death coming around all the time. With this, you've just got to go in that sea and it will be certain demise. As you can see, certain weapons aren't applicable to certain breeds of fish or size of enemy, so you need to make things that can actually tackle some of the larger foes that are out there. I was insta-killed by a boar when we went island hopping like almost straight away. Now I want to talk about the weather dynamics because I was quite happy with that sunny and you know night clear sky all that but the storms are amazing. This is a really incredible couch co-op game and it's also reignited my joy for survival horror or survival games. Ark is really the true king on the split screen level for that genre of game but it's coming up to what, eight or nine years old but it just has so much more depth than this because of its dino taming and massive world system and you've got like 18 free DLCs going down at the moment so that's just something this six gigabyte is never going to be able to compete with but the fact that it's on Game Pass a Available on PlayStation 4 at retail, but no PlayStation 5 version annoyingly. It's really cool still. You don't often get the chance to play full on Robinson Crusoe with your mate in amazing split screen with some really cool modern effects and some genuinely good survival game mechanics. So this is a big recommend from Couch Coop and of course, I'm gonna have to see you down there, aren't I?